With Blender 2.93, we have an amazing update to the video editing software, so we're gonna run through the basics of video editing in Blender. Thank you to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video. First things first, we're going to have our Blender default scene open here. This is how I have my default scene set. And we're gonna to switch to video editing mode. They have preset layouts. You can go ahead and add that up here, or you can just go to file, new, video editing. So now what we're gonna do is do a basic run through of the interface. First up, let's talk about performance. So you'll notice over here that we have cache and we have various options here. And you can actually set your cache to be either RAM or disk. Also big with the Blender 2.93 update are these proxy settings, which now work automatically much faster and allow you to play back in your timeline with a good preview. Now in this layout, we have a couple different windows up here. We have kind of our render settings, which are the standard render settings. And we can go ahead and look at our frame rate here. So I'm gonna leave mine at 24. Down here we have our output. And then here we have our file format. These are no different than when you're rendering 3D. Your output format, you're probably gonna wanna do FFmpeg video. And then you switch down encoding here and you can change your container to MPEG-4. And then you can choose your quality setting here, your encoding speed here. And then for the audio codec, you can use any of these, but I recommend using AAC. And this is gonna be your most standard output format when outporting for things like YouTube. You can also come up here to the top and change the resolution as well. I'm gonna go ahead and preemptively change mine to 1080 by 1080 since that's the size of the footage I'll be using as an example. Next up here, we have our previewer window, which is where we'll be able to preview our video. You can go ahead and switch that over to something else if you find yourself lagging while you're kind of doing effects down there. And then down here, we have our sequencer, which is where we'll be editing all of our clips and our toolbar over here. They work just like the rest of Blender, so you can press T and N if either of these sidebars are closed. Up here, we have our browser, which is where we can kind of drag and drop footage in. So I'm just gonna come up here and then I'm gonna to go to my export folder and grab in a couple of videos. Now, given the theme of the sponsor, I went ahead and made this little cranky coffee cup. If you like this coffee animation and you wanna see me make a tutorial on it, let me know in the comments below. So we're gonna go ahead and drag in one more clip so that we can uh, play with kind of the editing features and show some transitions and stuff later. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab something that looks kind of different so that it's a little bit easier to tell them apart. Let's go ahead and drag a longer clip in here. And you can see down here that it says building proxies. And what it's doing is building those proxies in the background. And we can adjust those settings over here, which are important. So when it's building proxies, it's creating a temporary file and storing that on your hard drive. So you're gonna to wanna to have a big hard drive when you're doing video editing, because video files get quite large. But it's storing a temporary version of that file on your hard drive that is a much smaller, easier to play back version than your source files, most likely. So what you can see over here is in our proxy settings, we can set this per strip or per project. So we can click per strip and change all these settings per strip, or I'm just gonna set it to project, and then we can change everything. So we can set a directory of where we want those files to go. So I'm just gonna set mine to my desktop for now. And then what you can do down here is choose your resolution. So at 100%, it's gonna render a proxy at 100% of your resolution, but we can go ahead and set ours to something like 25. And then down here, we can click overwrite to allow it to overwrite existing proxies. And then you can set your quality here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set mine to something lower, like 25. And then if I click rebuild proxy and timecode indices, it's gonna rebuild all those proxies. And you can see that this just became a little bit lower resolution, maybe not on YouTube with its compression. And then I'll be able to kind of play through these even easier. So if you're on a lower end machine, you're gonna to wanna to set those resolution and things a bit slower. So that's kind of like the basics of getting your footage into the sequencer and the proxy settings, which is really important for getting started. But now that you're ready to get started, let's look at how we can actually edit in this timeline. So a lot of the shortcuts and things are the same as elsewhere in Blender, making it a bit easier, but there are some that operate differently within the timeline. But first of all, let's look at like what this is right here. So you can see here that I have these blue clips and these kind of like teal clips. And these teal clips are the audio and these bluer clips are the video. And those may be different colors depending on kind of the interface settings that you have. But you'll notice this one doesn't have one. That's because I exported that one without audio. So you can have up to 32 tracks vertically in here. So you should be able to do pretty much any video edit with that unless if you're doing something like a documentary. Let's talk about navigation a bit in here. You can zoom in and out with the control wheel there. You can 
also do it with the little bar down here as well. If you middle click, you can drag left and right. And with the default settings, if you hit space bar, you'll go ahead and play your animations forward. Up here, we can see our frame rate. There are a couple different ways that we can drag these video clips. So we can box select and grab a couple of them and move them around. You need to be careful. These can actually separate from your audio clips and things can get out of sync there. We can actually group those by hitting Control G, just like we would something in the viewport or in the node strip. You know, see here it's created what's called a meta strip. Now this is going to remove some of your rights. You won't be able to have complete control over your audio and other settings. So sometimes you may wanna keep those separate. If you're just doing a basic video edit where you're cutting things together, that'll be totally fine. However, if you're trying to do some kind of more advanced edits and things, you may wanna keep those separate and just kind of keep them together as you move them around. Now, just like the viewport, if you have an object selected, you can press G and grab that to move that around. That's one way, but of course you can just click and drag as well. You can also select everything with the A button and deselect just like you can in the viewport. And the keyboard shortcut for the razor tool over here, if you don't wanna keep moving over here to click, is K, which is the same as the knife tool. So just kind of remember that. So then you can click here and you can make edits in your timeline and then you're able to switch back to your select view there and then you can see that you have your video clip kind of cut up. I'm gonna go ahead and just undo that. You've seen the blade tool already, so let's go ahead and kind of insert a cut here. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete the audio for now because I don't really need that. So what I'm gonna do is say that I wanna get rid of this end piece and bring in this next piece earlier. So I'll go ahead and drag that forward. And you can just drag that over the top of it. If we go down here and we drag into it, you'll see that turns red. And that clip turns red to let us know that when we let go, it's just gonna snap to the end. So you kind of just put it over the top if you want that to appear over it. Of course, we can also grab this clip and delete it there. Now you can use the split tool, but you can actually grab the ends as well. So let's go ahead and undo that a couple times, get rid of that split. And I can actually grab this end and move this down here and just change my endpoint. And then when you look over in the time, you'll notice that those kind of points and things change there as well. So you can also kind of manually input those over there if you want. Now, when you click and drag this up, you can actually hold shift and kind of move that in, or you can hold control and snap that. And you'll see that it kind of just snaps there to the end. While you're waiting on that next 3D render, let's talk about our sponsor while you grab a cup of coffee. At Trade Coffee, you can sign up to receive the best freshly roasted coffee, either to make more traditional hot coffee or cold brew, which I'll dive into more at the end of this segment. You can set your delivery schedule, flavor preference, Reference, grind, whether you want that to be whole or ground, and bag size before you get started. They have this kind of cool quiz-like process, and they'll ask you kind of on your preferences of what type of coffee you like and how adventurous you want to be in trying new flavors and recommend you things based off of that. At the end of that, you get to kind of choose based on the recommendations, which one you want, or if you want to look for more. Trade guarantees you'll love your first coffee, so if you don't like it, they'll actually ship you out a different bag for free. I finished my setup around the end of the week and was surprised to see that things were already coming in early next week. They come in these kind of cool trade bags right here. Now I have a weak tongue when it comes to hot liquids, so I actually prefer cold brew. So I got the cold brew kit as well, which comes with 20 bags in there. They're compostable, so they're eco-friendly. They make it really easy. You just go ahead, you just dump the coffee in there, stick it in whatever container you want and stick it in the fridge. And about half a day later, you have cold brew at home for an affordable price. My viewers will get 50% off their first bag of any coffee when they sign up. Click my link in the description box and enter the code you see here on the screen and free shipping will also be included. Next up, let's talk about kind of some of the display information we have here that kind of affects our playback and timeline here. So up here we have kind of what is seconds and you can see that we have like one second and then that's kind of plus eight. And as we zoom in, we can see more and more. Now, if you press control T, that will toggle it and move it over to a frame base. Personally, I prefer working in frames, especially when I'm working with my own animations and I'm familiar with kind of the frame counts I used for things. We also have an overlay option over here, just like we do in the viewport, and you can turn things on and off to kind of clean up your viewport if you want, or you can turn that off there. And then this is great for editors. You can add markers just like you can in the normal timeline. And of course you can name those and kind of make yourself marker points to make it your timeline more organized. If you're an advanced editor and you wanna dive deeper into selection, you can link strips, lock, mute groups, slip edit, snap to current frames, offset, and many other things. I'll link to the manual below for those that wanna get into the more advanced controls. But for now, let's move on and focus on the basics. Next, let's talk about kind of having a bit more control over our timeline here and playback. So we can actually set a preview range by pressing P. So if I press P, 
here, it will see that I get a box and I can kind of select where I want to play back. Now when I hit play, you'll see that it'll only play that section and start over. And then if you want to clear that preview range, you can hit Alt P. Now you'll notice here that our timeline doesn't go all the way to the end of our video here. So when we hit play here or when we render, it's not going to show all of our video. So what we can do is we can change that down here just like you would in a normal Blender animation with the frame range. Or what you can do is you can hit Control Home and Control End. Let's say that we don't want the animation to begin until frame 20. Well, if you go to frame 20 and hit Control Home, it'll create that endpoint there. You can see that's updated there. And over here, if you hit Control End, you can see that that'll kind of drag that out to the end there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and undo that because there's actually an easier option. If we go ahead and select everything and I just wanna make this timeline the length of everything in my timeline, I can come up here to View and you can see that you have quite a few options up here. You can frame selected, frame all, zoom, and that makes it kind of so you can move around in your viewport. But what we want to look at is the range here. So we can actually set the frame range to strip. So if I go ahead and do that, you see that it automatically creates the frame range to match the strips, which I find to be incredibly useful. You can go ahead and do that at the end of your edit. A lot of times I just crank a high number in here, like 5,000, finish my edit, and then set the frame range there at the end. So clips in Blender are called strips, and you can add different types of strips in the Add menu or by dragging them from the browser, as you've already seen me done. But if we come up here to the Add, you can see that we have different types of clips we can add. So we can add movies, we can add sound clips, we can add image sequences. So if you're exporting your 3D uh, animations, you're probably doing it in an image sequence and want to import that. We can also add color and text, adjustment layers, and effect strips. We'll dive into those a bit. For first, let's look at our strip menu over here. So when we click a strip and click over here, we have all of the kind of strip information over here. Now, some of these things are a bit advanced. So for the most part, you probably won't be using those if you're doing basic edits, but what you may find interesting are compositing, transform, and crop. So let's take a look at those. So for compositing, when we select this, we have all of our different blend modes, dark and multiply color. This is incredibly useful if you're doing some visual effects within the video editor, or if you're trying to composite your 3D renders with multi-passes. We also have an opacity slider here, and keep in mind that all of these attributes can be animated. So let's go ahead down here. We have our transform where we can kind of move our image around. And then we have our crop where we can kind of crop pieces of the image too. Now you can even get more advanced and do masks and things like that. If you want to go ahead and insert a keyframe, you can just go ahead and insert that keyframe there, move forward, insert another, and then you're actually able to adjust those in a dope sheet editor, just like you would any other animation in Blender. Now these are dependent on the type of the strip and what will appear there. So if we go ahead and click audio, you see that we get different settings. One thing that's useful is display waveform. Now this doesn't have any audio, but if you're editing dialogue, music, or anything like that, it'll display a waveform here. Like I said, there are other types of strips. So if we come up here to add, we can add different types of strips. So let's look at the color strip. And here in the color strip, this just creates a color background, which we can choose up here. And then also we have the text and text allows us to type in text. And you can see that we have all of our text settings here. As you can see, there's quite a bit of control over the text. You also have options like shadows and boxes and you can set the margin for that and more. Next up, let's look at modifiers. So modifiers are pretty much just effects that you can add to strips. But right now these are pretty much all color focused. So we have different ones right here. So we have color balance, curves, hue correct, brightness, contrast, mask, white balance, and tone mapping. Now some of these are a bit more advanced. If you're just looking for kind of like a basic, easy color correct, and you don't know much about color correcting, I recommend curves. And here you can see that when it's clicked on C, it's gonna adjust all of our colors, and it goes from shadow to highlight here, and you can go ahead and drag that and kind of adjust those things and you have various other options here that you can deep dive into or you can affect color channels so we can drag down and remove the red from the image now once you've gotten a bit more familiar with color i would recommend diving into the color balance node here which allows you to adjust your lift gamma and gain the colors and the values there now color correcting is a complex task if you'd like to see a video on that let me know you have this option up here for those that are serious about color, and we can look at different waveforms for our color. So if I go ahead and click through those, which actually brings me to another strip that we had that you might've seen before, which is called the adjustment layer. So if I go ahead and grab an adjustment layer, we can apply modifiers or effects to this, and it will apply those to everything underneath it. So if I go ahead and drag this down here, 
and then I add a strip modifier to it and add curves, can go ahead, let's just add something extreme so we can see the difference. I'm just gonna crank that down. And then now when I come over here, you'll see that it's also applying that effect there as well. So if I go ahead and mute this strip, which I can do by pressing H, you see that that mutes that strip so that we no longer see that strip, just like hiding in the viewport, and then we hit Alt-H, that'll bring that back, and you can see how that's turning that effect on and off. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this strip here, and then I'm going to look down here, and you can see that we have other strips as well too. So we have these kind of effect strips, but you need to have a strip selected. So let's go ahead and grab a video strip. Let's grab this one over here. We're going to go to Add, Effect Strip. And you'll see that we have a couple options down here. Now I'm hoping they add these as modifiers later because I think that would make things a bit simpler. But for now, this is the way we use it. So let's go ahead and add a Gaussian Blur here. And then you see that when we click this and come over to the Strip options, we have different options up here. So let's go ahead and set that to 50 and that to 50, and you can see that applies a blur to that strip. So let's go ahead and delete that. This is also where you can do time remapping. So there is a speed control strip. Now, this is a bit complicated to kind of run through for this tutorial. However, in the manual, there's actually a full tutorial on how to do slow motion. So like I said, that will be linked in the description if you'd like to dive into that a bit deeper. Next up, let's take a look at transition. So let's say that we want this to crossfade over this. So we're gonna drag this over here so that we have a little bit of time there. Now, there's a bunch of different ways you can add transitions. I think the quickest way is to go ahead, right click, and then you can just choose your transition here. So we kind of have fade in and out, fade in, fade out, and all those. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a fade in. And you'll see that we kind of get this darker line here that shows us that we have a fade. So if I go ahead and drag forward, you'll see that we kind of see that fade appearing there. So let's go ahead and we say we wanna adjust the length of the animation so that it comes all the way out here. So what we can do is actually open the dope sheet up here and I found this to be the easiest way to adjust it. I can go ahead, grab that and move that up to my frame head there. You can see how it adjusts there. And now we have a transition all the way from there to there. Now, just because I added a fade there doesn't mean the audio automatically fades. So you actually kind of have to add a fade for each one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a fade out. And I have both of those selected because so you can see how that kind of added to both of those. So if we're playing music, that would fade the music out as well. First, let's change our output range. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab our strips, just like before, range, set range to strips. And then I'm ready to export my video. So now I just come up here to the render and then render animation. And you'll see that it goes through the timeline and moves there. It's gonna move a lot quicker than 3D since it's just processing video files. Then what I'm gonna do is come back up here to the browser. We'll see that we have our video edit here and we can go ahead, drag that in there. It's building that proxy down there. And now we can see that we have our outputted video. I really hope you found this tutorial useful. If you like what you see, make sure to subscribe and like the video. Don't forget to check out that sponsor link below. And then I love seeing what you create from my tutorials. So whatever you make, make sure to tag me at Southern Shoddy on Instagram, where you can follow me to keep up to date with kind of my artwork and upcoming tutorials. I post my most frequent updates there. Thank you again for watching and hope you have a great rest of your day.